The month of February is National African American History Month, and NASA's joining the celebration, honoring the contributions of African Americans to the cause of spaceflight and of space exploration. Today, our guest is one of the newest members of uh, NASA's Astronaut Corps, U.S. Navy Commander Victor Glover. Good morning. Good morning, Welcome. Pat. Happy to be here. Um, what does the observance of African American History Month mean to you in terms of space exploration? Well, you know, I recently read a quote by Dr. Carter Woodson, the founder of Negro History Week, uh, which is what has grown into Black History Month, where he said that uh, his motivation to start Negro History Week was not solely to focus on Negro history, but to focus on history without race, religious, or gender bias. And I think that that's important, that uh, the legacy that Dr. Guy Bluford started here, being the first African American in space, uh, is one that um, I'm proud to, to be a part of, uh, and I'm looking forward to the opportunity to do my best and to continue to help Dr. Carter Woodson's dream uh, become a reality. It's just as important today as when he wrote those words in 1927. Tell me about how you ended up here, because it's, uh, I, mean, for, I think for every astronaut, that's, uh, that's kind of a different story, but yes. was astronaut a goal of yours from childhood? Well, I saw a shuttle launch when I was in elementary school, and I thought, I really want to fly that, which means you had to be an astronaut. And that planted the seed. But it grew into a professional aspiration when I saw Pam Melroy give a talk about her, her flight and about her crew and the technical accomplishments that they achieved on the mission. But really listening to her talk about the members of her crew and how much she respected what they did and how well they worked together, that was a really motivating uh, speech and I, I really uh, uh, connected with what she said. That's how I felt about my Navy career, and and I was looking forward to an opportunity to join this team. Uh, well, then, how did tell me about how you got to the Navy? Well, I wrestled in college, and that's where it began. Being on a, that small, high-performing team, and I knew graduating from college, I didn't want to go straight into uh, an office setting. I wanted to do something adventurous and, you know, that join the Navy and see the world. And so I, I joined the Navy, uh, didn't know if I wanted to be a Navy SEAL or a pilot, and I settled on being a pilot, and it's been a great career. It's been a great ride. Um, you, uh, as you said, you're a, you were a pilot. You've, yes. uh, you've been stationed a number of places around the world, right? Yes. My first squadron was in Virginia Beach, and uh, I deployed in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom there. I finished up that tour, and I went to test pilot school, and I went to the Air Force test pilot school in Southern California, and I went from there to test in China Lake in the desert, and I went from there to school and then back to the fleet, and I uh, performed my last operational deployments out of a squadron based in Japan near Tokyo, and then I went from there to Congress, and I did a fellowship in Congress and was working in the office of a senator when I got this this job. And and you've become an astronaut at a, at a pretty young age. Uh, tell me about what you do as an astronaut. It's been a couple of years since you and your classmates uh, went yes. through went through the training, but now you are a you know you've completed that. What do you do now? So the basic uh, five things you have to complete in astronaut candidate training are T thirty eight flying. You have to take ISS systems classes, foreign language training, uh, robotics, and spacewalk training. And so those five things, and there are also expeditionary crew skills training where we learn about ourselves and about our team and how to put them together and to work together in various environments. Uh, we also study geology and planetary science and uh, lots of other ancillary training, but those five things are the core uh, of astronaut candidate training astronaut boot camp, if you will. Mm. And once you're done with that, as, as an astronaut, what, what is your job now? You're clearly not flying in space at the moment. What do you do? Well, uh, we're here in mission control, and one of my jobs is to uh, serve as a capsule communicator or the person that speaks with the crew on board ISS, and I always love being here in mission control. Uh, we also have to maintain proficiency in those five things that I mentioned earlier. I fly T-38s, so we get in the suit and train at the neutral buoyancy lab. Uh, we have to maintain proficiency in those things, and then we also have a primary technical job, and my primary job is, is in the exploration branch, and I work on the ground systems for uh, Orion and SLS. NASA's looking for more astronauts right now, as a matter of fact. That's right. That it's, uh, is, is it a job you would recommend? I would highly recommend it. Uh, I uh, 
am excited that we're bringing in a new breed, a new group of astronauts and our astronaut candidates. And I encourage you, if you're thinking about it, if you're just thinking about it, get rid of all the, well, maybe I don't have this degree done yet, or apply. Mm -hmm. Put your name in the hat and, uh, uh, and, and shoot for it. Still taking applications for another couple of weeks, I believe. February yeah. 18th is mm -hmm. when the application closes. Go to USA Jobs and apply. <laughs> <laughs> As you look ahead, I, I think part of this answer I, I know is, is your participation is going to be off of this planet. But in a, in a broader sense, where do you see human space exploration going in the years to come? You know, it's interesting the way that you introduced that. You know, the, the, the piece that we get to contribute off the planet is important. But, you know, that may be a six-month stint in this 15, 20-year career. And so I think what we do on the ground is much more significant than what we can do on the space station. I haven't been there yet, so maybe that's not true. But I look forward to the opportunity. I said this when when, I, when we were selected. I, I am honored to be a part of this, this rekindling and sustaining of America's passion for space and aerospace and exploration. And so the job that we do on the ground to motivate and inspire the next generation of our science and, techn and technology workforce is one of the best parts of this job for me. The opportunity to fly in space, I focus so much on that and working here in mission control that one day the chief's going to say, hey, are you ready to ride a rocket? And I'm going to go, oh yeah, I do that too. I love being in, in the groups. I was at Kennedy Space Center yesterday talking to interns and, and some of the folks that work there. I love the opportunity to talk to folks about what we do and to share the message of the NASA team and the mission and the vision with America. Great. Victor, I really appreciate uh, a few minutes this morning. It's good to hear from you. Uh, pleasure to be here. Navy Commander uh, Victor Glover is one of the NASA astronauts.